All right, check this out. This is a Type 10 Defender build that's been kicking around my uh, storage in-game for a while. Uh, if you've been following my channel for a month or so, you'll have noticed there's a flight test for it. I didn't quite get a chance to do the, the commentary on it where I detail the build, mostly just because of some time constraints and some other interesting things that were happening in the game. Uh, now, what I'm reflecting here isn't true to what I was flying in the game because the you know, pure cancer is it's fun but it's kind of a meme and there have been other ships that are more useful in more situations that I've been committing my resources to. But this represents the ideal configuration that I'm trying to move towards over you know, probably here in the next few months. I guess it kind of depends how Odyssey ends up working out. But uh, the basic gist here is it works a lot like my other Type 10 builds where you're just you're leaning into the lack of maneuverability on the platform um, and making up the difference with just sheer thickness. So, uh, like taking um, basically your bog standard heavy duty deep plating on the armor, um, B rated internals except for the life support, which is A rated. And actually, it's because, uh, dirty little secret in this game, A rated life support actually has more integrity than B rated. It's one of the only modules in the game that behaves like this. Everywhere else, take B rated, take double braced or shielded where it's offered. You'll notice that this ship is using a different shield configuration than is typical for something intended for PvP. Normally, the basic logic among PvP type ships is to have the shield generator be smaller than the shield cell bank. And this is uh, the way that shield cell math works out. I've got an entire video on it you can look up under new player tutorials. But basically, having the shield cell bank be larger than the shield generator gives you more theoretical shield capacity because you have more shield energy banked in your cells and can just dump cell charges to restore your shields. This works especially well with prismatics. Um, it is less important on things like bioweaves, but still applicable. Um, I've decided to go against that particular logic with this ship build for a couple of reasons, which I'll get into here in just a sec. Um, now, fighter hangar, because this is a chi ship that is designed to be as annoying to fight as possible while still being kind of fun. Um, fighter hangers still make the netcode poop its pants, so um, you can use these to troll PvPers or gankers who are, are trying to harass you in open play. Um, they basically cause the instancing to rubber band, it basically makes the instance rubber band like crazy. The longer the fight goes, the more unplayable the game becomes. All you have to do is make sure that you keep some fighters out flying around. You will get hate mail if you use this. But that's kind of the point. This is a cancer. This is pure cancer. This is basically cheesing one particular mechanic in the game and abusing as many others as you can to try to get an edge. Now, here's an interesting module that does not get a lot of love in this game. Guardian Shield Reinforcement Package. They work under the same basic logic as the hull reinforcement packages in that each instance of one on your ship adds a flat increase to your ship's total shield capacity. They aren't very well used um, for a bunch of different reasons, but the basic gist of it is that the advantages they provide are kind of situational. 215 megajoules is cool, but uh, some of the larger shield cell banks can pop two or three times this amount of megajoule per shield cell cycle, whereas this is just like a flat, uh, just a flat tack onto the top of your shield's absolute capacity. But the amount of energy these things draw isn't too bad. Um, so I don't know why I have people, especially those running shield tank metas, don't consider using these more because it gives you more bang for your buck up here and could theoretically let you get away with a smaller shield generator, but um, I guess I'd have to do some experimenting uh, on my own with that before I encourage people to go and do that. Uh, now, hull reinforcements. You want to do heavy, heavy duty grade 5 deep plating on your 5s and your 4s, and then I think I even, yeah, I even put one on a 3, and then the 2s down here, the the other three and the two are both running thermal resistant with reflective plating to maximize the or to try to get the holes thermal value up and that actually works really well it's a good mix uh, and then two guardian module reinforcement packages this is because I had power to spare and the guardian variant of the module reinforcement is um, offers just a little bit more module integrity which means a little bit more protection um, they do draw power in order to work, meaning that if your power plant fails, this module protection goes away, and the, the module basically acts as if it's zero. Even though it still has integrity, it doesn't actually do anything for your ship. And then an advanced docking computer, because I feel like it, and docking the Type 10 is kind of a chore. 
but you could go in here and add another hull reinforcement and uh, and get this number up even higher pretty easily. But given that I've already got all of my resistances north of 10,000, I, I just didn't I didn't really care about it. Um, but if you're like hardcore and you want to get a little bit more survivability, yeah, go for it, man. It's it's all you. Now here's where we get to the interesting part. This is what puts the cancer in pure cancer. The uh, missile racks and pack hound launchers occupying the large and medium hard points. We'll get to the smalls here in a second. Missiles in this game are one of the most overpowered weapons that you can possibly use against hull tanks. But we have a shield tank meta, so these weapons don't get their full potential realized as often as would be appreciated. Although PvPers are very much aware of how devastating these weapons can be once the shields go down, and so for that reason there are a lot of curated PvP groups that have banned these modules outright. Um, however, this is an open play uh, patrol ship, so you definitely want to go for this to leverage the power, although you should do it understanding full well that missiles have a couple of distinct disadvantages, one of which is that unengineered, they deal explosive damage, and shields are usually very good at having explosive resistance. So, these first three large hardpoints are high capacity grade 5 overload munitions. Overload gives you thermal damage in addition to some of the uh, explosive damage that the weapon normally deals. It's a good mix and it allows you to attack the shields of a target pretty effectively. This last one down here is Thermal Cascade, which is okay. It aggressively heats up the target ship um, for every successful hit. So since we're planning on firing at shielded targets with these large hardpoints, this isn't a bad one to tack on. You could, if you wanted to, rotate in another Thermal Cascade, but I wouldn't recommend it because you want to keep your raw base thermal damage as high as possible when using these four hardpoints. Now, standard missile racks have a shot speed of... Oh, hang on, this one's dumb fire for some reason. I don't know why that went wrong. Seeker missiles have a lower shot speed than their dumb fire counterparts, but since they track targets and move faster than most PV ship, PvP ships can boost, it's still okay. Uh, but this does not quite apply to pack hounds, which have an on-paper shot speed of 600 meters per second, but because they twirl around all over the place in a drunken flight pattern, their effective speed is actually lower than this. So if you're firing at something far away, it takes a lot longer for the missile to get there, and some of the smaller, faster ships can actually outboost a pack hound. You just got to be careful and, and be situational about it. If someone's in a small ship, like a, a Viper especially, they can probably outmaneuver these things. Um, just watch your positioning and try not to waste shots. And also understand that if the person you're flying with is savvy enough to put an ECM on their ship, then this build is rendered com almost completely impotent. A single ECM can cut your effective DPS in half. Um, but ECMs are rare even in open play. I don't see a lot of people running them. I don't hear about a lot of people running them. Um, some PvPers and wings will maybe have one of them on in the, in the wing to protect everybody, but it's it's not very common because people don't usually fly ships like this. Uh, and that's because the Type 10 is in this configuration is only effective at range. If you're flying alone or as part of a wing, you're not trying to joust anybody. You're trying to sit back about five kilometers and just dump missiles into them as fast as you possibly can. You're, you're not a glass cannon, but you are a sniper rifle trying not to get in a fist fight. To that, um, in support of that initiative, uh, you want to make sure that you're flying with cover or, alternatively, uh, that you are in multi-crew. Now, multi-crew is an interesting concept, and FDEV just kind of implemented it poorly. So it doesn't get used very often, but multi-crew has a couple specific advantages when it comes to missile racks. The first is that your gunner has a 360 degree field of view that he can pivot around inside of, and he's more than capable of targeting anything that your sensors can detect and firing on them whether or not your ship is facing in their direction and the missiles will just turn around and fly in the direction they need to go to hit the target. This is a tremendous advantage for this specific build because it means that even if a PvP ship gets above and behind you in ideal firing position you can still keep doing damage and if he's not paying attention and he's inside of like a kilometer or two just dumping plasmas into you uh, these missiles will fly around and hit him in the ass and knock his engines out, which is hilarious. 
in a couple of the tests we did, we were able to, to sub-target engines pretty effectively, and, and it worked well. And that's the other thing. Uh, if you, the pilot, sub-target a system, uh, and your gunner is firing at the ship that you're sub-targeting, the missiles will track and hit the sub-targeted module. So drives are, are an easy one, especially on something like a Fertilance or a Chieftain. Chieftains are very exposed. Fertilances have big engines high up on the back. These missiles love to find them and hit them. Um, so make sure that you're sub-targeting so that when the shields go down, you can start dealing significant module damage. And if not the drives, then the, the size 3 or size 4 hard points that are present on the Chieftain or Fertilance. These little bastards wreck externals. It's part of why they're banned in PvP. Even without directly sub-targeting something, if you chain a bunch of hits together, odds are some of the hard points have been rendered at least severely damaged, if not completely inoperable. Um, now the other two things that I chucked on here were two beam lasers, long-range thermal vent, or long-range grade 5 thermal vent. This is to help balance the heat output that these missile racks put out. And even though the Type 10 has the highest heat capacity of any ship in the game, uh, all of these hard points firing at once is going to cook you. Um, part of the reason you do reinforced and shielded uh, core internals and optionals where possible is so that you can try to deal with all of the heat that these things are going to produce. And that's also why there's four heat sink launchers on them. Um, even though you've got shielded and reinforced across the board down here, there's one weak point on this ship, and it is the shield generator. At an integrity of 135, it's possible to cook this to zero before a lot of this other stuff does. And if it goes down, you're, uh, you're in trouble because these missile racks aren't reinforced and they're vulnerable to the same types of incoming damage that you're trying to take advantage of on other ships. And the Type 10 is really easy to module sub-target even when evasive. So uh, your plan, and it's actually part of why uh, the shields are set up this way, um, there's not really much point running a shield cell bank on this type of ship because your combat endurance is not long enough to really be able to utilize it. You can't really dodge the uh, feedback cascade experimental effect, so I opted to just not bother with shield cells, try to get the absolute shield value up as high as possible with the understanding that if somebody gets close enough to start tapping on me and I don't have a way out, that I'm going to find one. Um, and that's basically the logic that I recommend anyone who tries putting a ship like this together follow. If they close to within two kilometers and you don't have backup or a gunner to help deal with them, then you should just start plotting your highway can jump out because the fight is a foregone conclusion at that point. You just don't have the flexibility to be able to deal with that. But you do have, with 1800 megajoules of shield, plenty of time to calculate your jump and jump out of the instance. That's the nature of open play. Um, don't try to play fair in open play because odds are not very many other people are going to be doing it, so, you know, that's what curated PvP is for. If you want to have a really, really intense fight with skilled players who want to help you, get connected with some curated PvP groups and start playing in tourneys and, and having fun that way. But if you're out in open play, anything goes, baby. Anything. Because there's a lot of cheesy crap that you can pull and you just use what you got. Use what you know how to use and play to your best advantages. If somebody rips you out of Super Cruise at a community goal, flip and dump all of the synthesis materials you can or that you're willing to into the premium ammo and just go to town on them. Like that's that's the nature of the beast. Don't don't gimp yourself in those types of situations and just just play the game. Um, if you want to have a fair fight, do curated matches or get into CQC. Uh, let's see, shield cells. Uh, I opted for thermal resistant grade 5, um, two of those, actually three thermal resistant grade 5s and then one heavy duty. The thermal resistance are running super capacitors and so is the heavy duty so that I can try to get this value up without compromising the uh, resistance balance. Um, thermal's the strong one, I wanted that on purpose because a lot of incoming PvP damage is thermal and you got you know, kinetic's kind of a weak point and explosive as well, explosive, it's kind of hard to do anything with that. Um, that's pure cancer in a nutshell. Uh, if you guys have any questions or any other topics you want me to cover, let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll catch you later.